once again and welcome to section five of Econ 311, which is microeconomic theory. So in this section, I will be reviewing briefly reviewed preference theory, right, which is also a theory of demand. So the section will introduce reviewed preference approach to studying consumer behavior. Um, this final approach to the discussion of consumer behavior is viewed superior to cardinal and ordinal approaches, right? So, as a result, economists adopted to account for weaknesses in the other two approaches. So, in terms of the outline, I'll look at some assumptions, the concept of reviewed preference, assumes of reviewed preference, we'll try and derive the demand curve and the indifference curves. So in terms of the section outcomes, I mean, they have been listed over here, so I would want you to take your time and go through it. The reading um, chapter is chapter seven of Varian, which is intermediate microeconomics and any other textbook that is available to students. So the assumptions um, as we start are that a consumer's preferences is only observed by studying his or her behavior, right? So I cannot tell how you behave unless I study you. So it is assumed that preferences don't change while the consumer is being observed, meaning there is some consistency, right? So rationality assumption is also made here in that consumers are rational, that they will always prefer more quantities to less of the commodity. We have made this assumption. And then consistency means that um, the consumer is consistent in all his decisions. By implication, it means that if a commodity X is chosen over commodity Y, then he or she will never change his or her mind in choosing Y over X. Then the transitivity assumption we discuss in the ordinal approach also works here in that the consumer is transitive, meaning it means that if Y into bracket X is greater than Y and Y is preferred to Z into bracket Y is, is greater than Y, then X is preferred to Z. Right. So if the consumer prefers X to Y in simple terms, and y to z, then that means that the consumer prefers what x to z, like we discussed under the ordinal approach. So let's assume that a consumer is faced with the following bundles, x1 and x2, y1, y2, at prices p1 and p2. So the consumer needs to choose the optimum bundles to use. This is the expenditure faced by the consumer. So by implication, X1 and X2 is directly revealed to prefer to Y1 and Y2 if this is how the consumer behaves, right? So P1 X1 plus P2 X2 is greater than or equal to P1 Y1 P2 X2. Then it means that X1 and X2 are revealed preferred to Y1 and Y2. So this is a scenario where we have plotted the options available here. You can tell that X1 and X2 comes with superior bundles than Y1 and Y2. So the consumer reveals to prefer X1 and X2 than Y1 and Y2. Let's further suppose that the consumer chooses Y1 and Y2 over Z1 and Z2 when faced with prices P3 and P4. Then this means that P3 and P P3, Y1, P4, Y2 is greater than when we multiply the prices by Z. So that means that X1 and X2, we know we established earlier, were preferred to Y1 and Y2. And here, Y1 and Y2 are preferred to Z1 and Z2. So by inference, by transitivity, it means that X1 and X2 are indirectly revealed preferred to what? Z1 and Z2. So we are transposing the choice by transitivity. If you prefer X over Y and Y over Z, then it means that you prefer X over Z. So this is what we are trying to indicate here. So you see that we have the original budget line 
and we have another budget line right based on the prices of the commodities and you can tell that z1 and z2 are here obviously the consumer has revealed to prefer x1 over x1 x2 over y1 y2 so would obviously prefer x1 x2 over z2 z1 right so um in terms of the axioms, the consumer reveals his preferences for commodities. He chooses um, one pair over another. Um, so if the consumer expenses or an income on two commodities, A and B, then there exist two bundles, X and Y, that contain commodities A and B. Right? So in the market basket of these goods, um, we want to look at weak axioms of revealed preference. So as X1 and X2 are directly revealed to prefer to Y1 and Y2, right? then from this assumption, it will never be possible for Y1 to be directly revealed to be preferred to X1 and X2. Right, so it's just like if A is preferred to B, B will never be preferred to what A. That is a weak axiom of revealed preference. Then similarly, for the strong axiom of revealed preference, it indicates that if X1 and X2 is directly or indirectly revealed preferred to Y1 and Y2, it will never be the case that Y1 and Y2 will be directly or indirectly revealed preferred to x1 and x2 so here we are stating the condition more strongly by indicating that under no circumstance would the consumer change his or her mind in revealing to prefer one over the other so basically um, from the explanations i have given um, this diagram um, puts it in perspective where we are looking at combination of X1 and X2 and how the consumer figures out by picking the optimal bundle. In terms of deriving the demand curve, right, we derive the demand curve from the revealed preference approach, right, and here the same principle applies where we look at changes in price of the commodity. So here, with an increase in the price of the commodity, right? Originally, this was the budget constraint where point E was chosen. Increase in price leads to F, and then we do some compensation, and then the point moves to G, right? So in that scenario, we see that the consumer, based on this, we can plot the demand curve by showing that as the price increases the consumer demands less of the good right in terms of the indifference curve the concept is also quite similar where the reviewed preference um, diagrams are used to indicate preferred zones so preferred bundle right will give a miniature indifference curve. We have inferior bundles, which are bundles that are within the opportunity set we discuss under the ordinal approach. This area is quite unknown to the consumer because within this region, um, they, have, they don't really have adequate knowledge over um, the region over there. Um, so basically, this is um, quite um, the discussion we have we are having on reviewed preference i would urge you to read the chapter carefully and go through the curves that have been derived in this chapter so the question here is using graphs and tables show how the weak axiom of reviewed preference and the strong axioms of reviewed preference can be violated all the best